The judges will decide. Scoring from ringside, they are Carol Castellano, Chuck Hassett, and Marty Sammons. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Dr. James Jenkin. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, Thomas y Caballeros, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red and weighing in officially at 129 pounds. His professional record, 37 victories, including 23 knockouts with only five defeats. De Merida, Mexico, the former champion of the world, Goody Espada. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white with black, and officially weighing 130 pounds. His professional record, 44 victories, including 33 knockouts, with only one defeat. Damas y Caballeros de la Zona Norte, Tijuana, Mexico, the two-time world champion, El Terrible Eric Low blow here. Mouthpiece. Hey, Mouthpiece. Obey my command. Let's go. Not a lot said there from Dr. James Jen Kim, our referee tonight here at Staples. Nearly 13,000 people here tonight. Big crowd. Big crowd. Huge crowd. For this, uh, great uh, part of boxing here tonight. Just under 13,000. What a tribute that is to this fight card. And the people who put it together. Round one. Super featherweight eliminator scheduled for 12. From Staples Center in Los Angeles. Eric Morales in the familiar white trunks with the black trim, Goody Espada. Let him go, let him go, let him go. In the red trunks. Morales comes out, goes right to the jab. He's now 27 years old. Espada is 29. Morales, a very experienced, relaxed fighter. You see how relaxed he is. He's always very calm before a yes. fight. Always amazes me. That's why he's such a great champion. I mean, you know, the, story. the best champions are always uh, the more you relax in the ring, the better uh, things flow come, you know, happen. When your punches flow better, when you're tight, you can't let your punches go. Both yeah. fighters were born to it. Of course, Goody's father was a champion. Eric Morales was born in a building in North Tijuana owned by his father. Part of it was a boxing gym. They have a little bit better gym there now. <laughs> They've since re rebuilt the a, a, a boxing corporation going there. But Eric Morales was born to this sport, as was Goody Espada. Both great champions from Mexico. And I think that's why so many people come out tonight to see these great champions. And yeah, Morales uh, usually keeps a fast pace. In the ring, and the spot is usually a slow starter, but he gets he gets better as the rounds go, and that's what happened in the first encounter. He got more aggressive in the later rounds, and, that, and pulled out some of the later rounds, and that's why the fight was so close that uh, actually a lot of people thought uh, Guti won the fight. Good body shot inside from Morales, who had landed the overhand right earlier, doing some damage there. Guti just stands back up and glares at him right now. Morales has been in the 
the wars with Marco Antonio Barrera. He'll box you. He'll fight you. But part of what makes him so great is his versatility. Round one scheduled for 12. Morales on the ropes. Yeah, behind his shoulder there. Yes. Hitting him back there a little bit. Final seconds of round one. Guti, good long range right hand. It just missed. It wasn't a bad round for Guti Espaos. Not at all. We'll be listening in. Raul Marquez will be interpreting. Huh? Listen in here. That's it. Morales talking in the ear of his son. Don't get too close to him. You get too close to him right now. Move your waist. Move, move. And get down low a little bit. Take your time. Take your time. Don't get too close. Don't get too close right now. What do you think about that advice, bro? Take your time? Yeah, I mean, he's got to take his time. You got to understand Eric Morales is a great champion, a lot of experience. Can uh, rush in into punches and get caught carelessly. Morales was telling us he sees guys fight at 122 where he fought, won his first world title. He couldn't believe that he ever got down to that weight. Really struggled to make 126. Yeah, he's big. He's uh, he, he's tall for this weight class. That's why I think he's going to be able to handle being at 130 pounds. But uh, you were talking about, I mean, it's, it's a big it's a big uh, weight difference. I mean, he's Travis. Ooh, oh, he got cut. caught there. Yeah. Guti uh, caught him there with them looping hands, uh, over hands. He's an uh, awkward fighter. He's, uh, he's awkward. Yeah. Well, he got hit on the chin with a short right there. Goody. He's taking a fight to him. Combination to him taking it to Morales on the ropes. Morales right above us here. Morales doesn't mind this at all. Now he's got Goody turned around on the ropes. A lot of punches being thrown. Good right hand that landed to Morales. Now they step out and keep throwing. Round two of 12. And they're making this a war now, Alan. Yep. Here they Total go. Total toe action here by both fighters. What Luffy happens to the patience? Ter terrible Morales going at it. An all Mexican brawl here. You just never know how it's going to turn out when two Mexicans get in the ring. There are no, no technique. No technique here, just but nothing but guts. I don't, I don't see that patience. <laughs> Both punches landing. Goody got stunned a little bit on the inside. Now he's holding on, but he's throwing wildly. Eric Morales stepping out, looking to be more accurate, but Goody just looks like he's just unloading, throwing with his eyes closed almost. And that's the kind of thing that Morales will eat up. Anyways, like I was saying earlier about the 130-pound weight class, it's going to be hard for Morales or either fighter finding any of this. Solid champions at 130 pounds. They've been there for a while. They're more stable at that weight class. It's not going to be the same. Oh, good uppercut from Morales. You see that beautiful shot when he stepped yes. away from the punt? Come on. Both fighters fun to watch. But you never see Morales rattle. I don't think this fight's going to distance the way it looks right now. I don't think they'll have any gas to go to distance. Spot has just came out, started throwing from the get go. Ruthie Tank trying to land body shots. What a round. Yeah, that was a fun one. Calma, calma, calma. Al aire, fuerte. 
fuerte, fuerte, fuerte. Breathe in, breathe in. Concéntrate, concéntrate. Concentrate, concentrate in what you're Tienes doing. You need to have much coordination for this. You gotta have good Cierra coordination to do this. Close your eyes, close your eyes for a moment. Piensa en el agua, piensa en el agua. Take a look at the replay. Got kind of a, a war there. Yeah. I mean, in terms of a, a gutter war. Yes. Look at Goody throwing with his head down, and then he ate Missing, that one. Eating punches, but also connecting some good punches of his own in this last uh, round. There's the miss, yeah. and then he paid for it. Oof. That's that little uppercut that you were talking about, where he backed away. Beautiful uppercut that Morales countered with. Well, the great fighters know where they're going to be when they miss. Yes. Morales knows where he's going to be. He misses a big, big hook, and Morales comes right back to where his head is. That, that's the anticipation. You can't, you can't teach that. I mean, that's instinct. No, no, no. That's, that's, it's just coming uh, with you know, natural talent. Glad you're with us. Round three. If it's anything like round two, we're going to be quite busy, folks. Scheduled for 12. This is an eliminator. Winner moving on. To face the Matador, Jesus Chavez, early next year, we anticipate. There, Morales comes in with a great record of 44 and 1, and everybody knows what the one loss was. Very close to Marco Antonio Barrera. Judas Spadas comes in 37 and 5. He's had some lapses in his career. He admits it. Like when he lost to Morales, he went out looking for a rematch, and he lost to a guy named William Abelion. There's no excuse for that. He admits that, but tonight he's brought it. No, he's up for this fight. He, uh, he you can tell, he mentally and physically prepared, and uh, he's looking to win. He wants to win. A looping right that misses. Like, if you'll watch the uh, precision with Morales, he doesn't he doesn't waste a lot of effort when he when he doesn't have anything. But when he sees something, he'll go right for it. A little swelling in the right eye of Spadas. Not very much. Morales very effectively picking off punches and then countering. Espadas wants to work the body, Raul. That's what he wants to do. Maybe there slow down Morales a little bit. See a swelling right there on Gutes's uh, right eye. Right swelling. eye, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't very much, but it, as it goes along, it's because his head is down. This is going to be a problem. So we're at round three. Oh, good combination. Snapping that jab in there from Morales. Up on his toes. Accurate. Yeah, Morales' combination is coming in there more, more accurate than and he'll, Guti's wild punches. Uh, Guti's being a little bit uh, over aggressive and swinging wild. Uppercut, body shot from Morales. And Morales is coming right up the middle with shorter shots and connecting. Just ripping it up the middle when he gets a chance. And he knows he's got that eye swollen. Round three, we go to the cards if there's any accidental foul after four rounds. Or if a fighter Adam, come on, can't front. continue because of some swelling or cuts. I don't like cuts, Ro. I hate cuts. Oh, believe me. <laughs> yeah, I, you I know, don't like cuts. I know about cuts. That's for your benefit. <laughs> Oh, that was that was beautiful. He, he he threw the jab and then went downstairs right off of it. Yeah, it changes it up, confusing the fighter like I was talking earlier. Never throw the same combination. See, good head movement there, good angles by El Terrible Morales, putting on a clinic. Oh, oh. oh that's it. Oh, I don't know if he's oh, getting up. I don't think he's getting no. up. Six, Lightning fast. Eight, put on a clinic. Footwork. Nine. Oh, that's it. Then when he had the opening, that's it. pouncing, El Terrible Morales. Big win for El Terrible Morales. Does it again. Wow, that was pretty impressive, wasn't it? He got in a rhythm. Yes. He got in a rhythm. He had, the, he had Goody off balance. Had him wide open. He could move. Angles, combinations, made a miss. And bam, connected. I got news for folks in the 130 pound division. There's a new sheriff in town. <laughs> and he's from North Tijuana. Or Tijuana. There we go. Down there. You got it. You got it down, Alan. Yeah. Wow. Folks, if you're going to see a boxer in full bloom and at the prime of his career, Showing you how it's been done. This is not 
something you can teach. It's born instinct. Watch here this see, replay. Here we see the replay here. The movement. Overhand right by one two by Eric Morales. Well he confused Guti you know he, he didn't know where he was coming from when he did all the all the movement led right, to this. Here it is. Right there right behind the ear right right where you lose your your balance your equilibrium. You get hit right there and his lights out. It's over. This was all set up by when he was on the ropes. Yes the making a miss in and out. Miss. There he goes. Bye. Oh, I knew he wasn't getting up when he connected with that shot. What a sweet victory. No doubt about it this time. Maybe he did have a liver problem last time, but that's all past history, right? Oh, people forgot about that one now. <laughs> yeah, no doubt who the better fighter was in this one. Guti has a swollen eye. He's a good guy, too. Look yeah, he was this. trying. He was trying. He's a good man. Like both these fighters very much. Just the better, the better fighter one. A man who's found new life at 130 pounds. Precision, accuracy, natural born talent. The biggest name in sports in Mexico right now. And he brought almost 13,000 people. Part and a of it. big Mexican band, Banda. Banda. Yeah, that's what they call it. But we have more action for you. Let's go to the decision. Let's go to Michael Buffer now. The, the official results. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 2 minutes 58 seconds of round number three. The winner by knockout victory. And now the number one ranked featherweight in the world, the two-time world champion, De La Zona Norte, Tijuana, Mexico, El Terrible. Eric Morales. We're getting ready now to hear from El Terrible, courtesy of Mario Lopez, who's working the ring for us tonight. Very happy, Eric Morales. I am quite sure you see him setting him up right there for the interview. Yes. As soon as we're ready to send it up, I'll let you know. Let's send it up now. Mario, take it away. Felicidades, Eric. Felicidades. Buen pelea, buen pelea. Tú pensabas que la pelea estaba muy fácil. ¿Cómo lo miraste? Bueno, mira, yo sé decir mi trabajo. Como les dije, esto iba a ser diferente. Podía boxear de tú a tú. Lo hice en dos rounds. Y yo creo que lo castigué bastante bien. Golpes al cuerpo, golpes a, a la cabeza. Y me decidí boxear atrás para, para agarrar mejor, más balance, más, más distancia para conectar, conectar mejor el golpe. He came very prepared to this fight. He thought he'd stay on the outside. He attacked the body, he attacked the head, and he felt he caught him with a good shot. So he feels very confident, very happy about this win. Tú pensabas, um, Eric, uh, ya sabemos que quieres a pelear contra todos los campeones. ¿Has uh, pensado a, a pelear contra Jesús Chávez en el futuro? Eh, claro que sí, se supone que tenemos una pelea con él el eh, febrero, fines de febrero, principios de marzo, eh, por el título de 130 libras. Pero los fanáticos aquí en, en, en Los Ángeles eh, preguntan mucho por Carlos, Carlos Hernández, el famoso Hernández. Creo que es un buen peleador y creo que me gustaría pelear con él para, para, para el gusto del público. He feels very comfortable with this weight class. He wants to take on all the world champions. I asked him about facing Jesus Chavez. He really wants to face him, but he's really intrigued by Carlos Hernandez. He hopes he is victorious tonight so he can face him in the future, and he loves fighting here in L.A., and he thinks that's what uh, all the fans would like to see. Buen pelea. Felicidades, Eric. Viva Tijuana. Thank you, and back to ringside. Okay, Mario, thank you very much. Viva Tijuana, indeed. I think most of Tijuana's here tonight, but we've got some great action still ahead. And we've got a special treat.